Right, the next couple of videos are about impulse control, which sounds very technical, but it really isn't. All that impulse control means is teaching your dog coping mechanisms to deal with um, frustration or arousal or wanting to get to something that may not be appropriate. I pretty much advise impulse control activities with all of my clients so that we can teach um, some really good lead, lead skills and that we can prevent unwanted behaviours such as um, snuffling treats, running after other dogs that are chasing a ball. The implications are really endless and it's such a simple activity. This first impulse control exercise involves a handful of treats and you are going to sit or kneel down so that the handful of treats is at your dog's nose height. Now, key thing here is to not wave your hands around, keep them nice and steady, because otherwise you're going to encourage your dog to follow your hand and try to snatch the treats. I'm not gonna use any verbal commands here, so this isn't a leave it or a ah uh ah. -uh. This is simply training your dog a default behavior around food so that when they see something that they would like to eat they are more likely to look at you than simply go ahead and snatch it. So as you can see here I am just waiting for some kind of um, calm behaviour, no more mugging, no more scratching or trying to nuzzle the food out of my hand and as soon as the dog offers me that and backs away from my hand, I reach over with my other hand and feed them a treat. So once we've done that a few times, we can start to up the criteria slightly. Because what I'm aiming for is that rather than looking at my hand and dribbling, my dog is gonna look at me as a request for the treat. So gradually, I start to move the treat up to my eye, so that becomes the reward zone for the dog. And in a very short session, you will get to the stage where your dog is looking at you rather than your hand to earn the treat. The next steps of this are that you can start to open your hand up. So every time your dog then reverts back to mugging, if they do, you just close your hand simply, no verbal cues. And you can then move on to having a pile of food on the floor with your hand over it as a dome and uncovering it and covering it as you need to. Really only the words I'm using in this exercise is good dog to tell them that they've completed the task and they've done the right thing and they've earned their food and I would like them to do that again for me please. This food exercise has so many implications. Don't just think about it as food because it could actually save your dog's life. If you're taking a tablet or you drop something that's quite dangerous for them and they are likely to just jump straight ahead and eat it, then having some previous training around impulse control like this could be really, really important and help save any future vet trips. This exercise is particularly useful for dogs that like to chase. So I'm going to start off by holding on to my dog's lead and preventing them from chasing the ball. Now this is going to be tricky for a dog that has been used to chasing balls before, so make sure that you steady yourself and use someone else as an anchor if you need to. And we're going to throw the ball forward and let the ball go dead. I'm simply going to move around into the periphery of their vision and see if I can encourage them to look back at me with my body language, maybe a kissy noise. The idea of this is to get them to take the eye off the prize so that it's then more difficult for them to find with their nose and is also to get them to involve me in the game so that looking back at me is the start of the hunting sequence. And once that dog looks back at me, I'm gonna release them with a yes, go find it. And I'll let them off to go and get the ball. They'll be using their sense of smell rather than their vision. It means that they'll be thinking about their body movements a lot better. So you're less likely to have any physical injuries. Chasing is an adrenaline fueled game. So if you do that on your lunch break, you're likely to come back with a very excited dog. Whereas if you do sniffing and hunting games like this instead, they're more likely to be quite fulfilled and tired in, in a way that encourages rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm.